On this beautiful island in the heart of Europe is this wild, rugged, hidden bay wedged between steep rocky cliffs with an enormous valley its backdrop. Is it okay to swim to shore here? What's the worst that can happen? Dying. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. It's like a portal leading into another universe. The group through these amazing trees. So we're off to go find it by sailboat. If you've just joined us, John and I have just flown halfway around the world from Australia to Spain to pick up this brand new boat. We are about to see 55 for the very first time. The Genoa Yachts 55. This is the first of its kind. This is hull number one. We moved all our belongings on board, packed enough food to last us a couple of weeks, and then set off for our maiden sail out of Barcelona and into the Mediterranean Sea. We sailed 16 hours overnight to Mallorca. It's a relatively small island that's fast becoming one of the hottest holiday destinations destinations in Europe. This place we've heard about on the island is called Sar Calabra. It translates to the snake. So before we go find it, we're going to park up at this anchorage nearby. Oh my gosh, this place is gorgeous. We're pretty tired after our sail overnight and this bay is so perfect in every way that it attracts boaties from all over the world. It's cute trams, it's colourful beaches that symbolise summer. It's the perfect place to rest and recover and catch our breaths. Hola. Hola. <laughs> so where is this? Sol, so, Solaire. Solaire. got to think of it because Sol is sun. Solaire. Yeah, it's a cool name. Yeah, like it's a beautiful it. name. The crew back on the boat, John and I are just going to go for a little sticky beak. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go for a little walk. We're going to go for a little walk. It's about an hour till sunset, so we've got a nice hour to go and explore. This town is so beautiful, John. Like, it feels so good to be back in the Mediterranean. It's just pretty. It's just beautiful. Yeah, I think it's amazing. You know, the thing I always love about these places are the mountains. It's just so scenic. The thing is, John and I and everyone in this bay are completely oblivious to the unforecasted storm that'll soon descend on us in the middle of the night. So peaceful, like everything's so still, there's like no wind. I know. It's just like the right temperature and the long sunsets, like it's 8.30 at night. As John and I walk along the foreshore and find a restaurant to eat dinner at tonight, we're mindful of the boat and where we've anchored. You see, it's peak season and it's packed in the bay. Everyone is squished like sardines. So we've tied up fenders on our lifelines and we decided to anchor on the edge of the channel leading into the marina, far from our neighbours. Our crew has also decided it's probably a good idea to always have someone on the boat keeping a watchful eye. So we're taking turns going to shore. So this date night on land for John and I feels extra special tonight. We are at the cutest little restaurant. And we're going to eat some tapas. Yes, they're ready. Um, <laughs> uh, we're thinking the burrata cheese. Yes, the medication. Yes, and the fried anchovies. Oh. Wow. It has been a crazy 72 hours since leaving Australia between getting the boat organised, sailing here to Mallorca and then planning our sail to the remote national park tomorrow. So right now we're soaking up the present moment, finding pleasure in the simplest of things. Oh wow, that is so creamy. Like how this burrata cheese oozes over our ripe, plump Spanish tomatoes, reminding us where we are and where we've just come from. Oh, this is so lovely. I'm so excited to explore. Man, I can't believe how stressed, like stressful it was getting organized to come away again. I think I did 50 hours flying in two weeks. <laughs> That's 50 hours in the air, clocking up enough miles to fly around the Earth's surface and then some in just a fortnight. It feels really good now that we're here. It has been really crazy though. Behind the scenes, it's been really stressful. It looks like when your drone shots come up, it's like picture perfect. And then behind the scenes, it's like, oh, uh, hey, we made a little girl. friend. Hang on. Hey. Hola. Hey. Hola. But with a big day planned to find the nearby caves and hike the snake tomorrow, we decided to get an early night. On the way home, we picked up some gelati for the crew. Ro picked us up from the jetty and back on board is when we noticed the chaos around us. Look at these boats over here. So close. I can't even begin to tell you how close that is. There was no wind and these were my famous last words. It looks like we're going to get a good sleep tonight because this bloke is moving. Phew. Thank goodness for that. We were so far behind on rest and on our very first night here on Anchor, we hoped to catch up on sleep. But little did we realise this was actually the calm before the storm and the entire bay was about to get caught off guard. This could get messy, John. Just when we were hoping to shake off the last of our jet lag. Can we 
just quickly talk about last night? I happen to have some supplies of sleeping tablets that I picked up in France. You know the scene on Wolf of Wall Street where the guy's trying to get to the phone box? <laughs> Stay where you are. Don't get behind the wheel of the car. Just woken up. Just seen lightning outside. It's pretty crazy. It has a time. Definitely. Well, I didn't get up. I was half asleep. You guys were battling other boats and lightning bolts, I believe. <laughs> Oh my god. He's going into the marina. He's like this. Yeah, it was crazy. It was insane. I was not expecting this in summer, like, at all. We heard, like, the dogs of boats hitting. Oh my god, they just hit each other. And horns going off. Jeez. They have horns and torches and a lot of angry Italians yelling at each other, like, Siamo da qui. Partiamo da qui. <laughs> the guy had to like raise his ankle by hand and he was stuck between two boats. Of all the nights to have half a sleeping pill. Mm. And it was only half. <laughs> 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 yeah, probs won't be doing that again. <laughs> As for John being the captain, well, he handled jet lag the old fashioned way, sleeping it off. He has a pretty big adventure planned out for us over the next couple of weeks to circumnavigate Mallorca any clockwise. And later we'll sail over to Italy, but for now, we're all the way up here in Porto Soler. And today's mission is to find the snake. Yes, it's a bit of a detour, but it'll be worth it. We're gonna have to be at the top of our game though, physically and mentally. You'll see why when we arrive. Oh. Oh, that's burning. Can't believe I said this was easy. Kel has whipped out her exercise bands and we're squeezing in some much needed exercise on board. We're actually all feeling quite inspired to get into shape since Ro joined us, AKA James Bond. We think that Ro is like no. a James Bond. Yeah. He looks like James yeah. Bond. <laughs> 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 We've been noticing the similarities more and more. And when John flew the drone yesterday, we had to watch the footage back together. Is this another James Bond moment? Yeah, yeah well, it's it has to be. Put the music on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look like a full rush job. That's what I was about. Because I'm like. I'm supposed to get my water in my mouth. That goes with you too. And so in the misty morning, off we all went for our first mission together in Mallorca to find the enormous river gorge John's been researching. Got some yogurt and some walnuts and some blueberries here this morning and we are about to go on an adventure. Tell us about where we're going today. Calabra, it's about six miles north of where we are. Apparently like quite a dramatic anchorage with big rocky mountains either side. You can walk up this gorge, so yeah, it should be pretty interesting to go and have a look. What did you have Plus, for Is that your mini... <laughs> it's like a shooter. Once you get to the island of Mallorca, you can visit Sacalabra by car. There's this scenic drive and it's one of the most iconic with its windy roads and renowned hairpin turns. But by a sailboat, we're immersed and surrounded by nature, dwarfed by the sheer size of these giant cliffs. This is so cool. It's pretty spectacular, like that's straight with that straight up out of the water. This hike we're about to do, do you know how high it goes? Oh no, it's kind of all at sea level. It's like a canyon. Right. So you follow like a dry riverbed up through the, these cliffs. Mm. On our way there, the swell is a bit messy and the waves are a bit like a washing machine. The remnants of the winds and the storms we've experienced the last couple of days. It's created quite a bit of chop out on the water and a bit of swell. And the coast is all exposed, so there's not really a lot of great anchorage as well. You were, it's probably the best anchorage on this coast. But we're going to give it a crack. Yes, the weather isn't perfect, but this is our only opportunity. We're just trying to suss out the situation right now. There are some people on the beach, and then there's this awesome like restaurant in this gorgeous cove. And so we found a spot in the middle of the bay and lowered the anchor. So we're just gonna quickly check, make sure that the anchor is holding. The water is so blue sun's come out and it, the colors are just so glorious <laughs> it's amazing but with the swell bouncing off the rocks and us around from side to side we didn't feel comfortable leaving the boat with no one on board so close yet so far it's pretty rough made an executive decision that it's probably a bit too dangerous for a while there, we waited, scratching our heads, contemplating a new plan to get to shore. No, we've got to give this a crack. We've come all this way. I reckon we can do it. I don't it think it's that bad. It. Yeah, it is a challenge. Because it's a bit swelly, we won't be able to get the tender out. So we might just 
swim Very to shore. Too. What's the worst that can happen? Dying. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> I reckon it's gonna be amazing. I reckon I'll be fine. Won. So guys, this is the plan. We'll motor over to the restaurants where it's calm and safe for Ro and I to then jump off the boat and swim to shore. We just have to ask permission first because ferries come and go from this port. Just wondering if we could drop some people off here, they're just gonna swim to shore. I'm gonna stay on board. We're only anticipating staying here maybe 40 minutes. Do you know if there is anyone arriving in the next 40 minutes or so? They don't want to help me. Is it okay to swim to shore here? Uh, it's okay, but be careful. Gracias. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Stina, <laughs> let's go. Expected. Just Kel and I manning the boat. <laughs> it's a tough gig. It's a tough gig. Oh, that view is horrible. It's beautiful. I think uh, Ro and Christina are just, I've gone up here somewhere and there's a track that goes all the way around the hill down here back to that beach we're at. So they've gone to check it out. No! There she is. Yeah. And we're right in the way of this ferry here, but he kindly allowed us to stay. When I explained to him on the radio that we're just going to be maybe 40 minutes to let them have a look and we'll leave as soon as we see his passengers come back. He was happy with that. Signs led us to the Torrent de Paris. Taking us through caves, this is by far one of the most unique trails we've ever experienced. I do make my way to the park. You go through these amazing caves. Super cool. The ground is a bit slippery. The tunnel is pretty narrow. And when you pop out. Wow. Oh my gosh. I feel like I've just walked onto like a Star Wars set or something. I feel like I'm on another planet. How insane is this? The drastic landscape surrounding us was formed millions of years ago, carved out by water flowing from the Serra di Tramontana Mountains, which created the narrow gorge. This is one of the most extensive river canyons found in the Balearic Islands. And while Ro and I were in what felt like another universe, John motored around and this view will forever be etched in my memory. For Ro, well, it was enough to tempt him into the water, even though the waves were like wrecking balls. Oh my God. trained to swim up to five kilometers at a time. So this was literally like a piece of cake for him. We do actually have a surf lifesaver on board. Pigs. And so I was waiting for his command to go. A thumbs up. But instead he gave me the no deal. Uh, I'm gonna have to walk back. And so in 40 minutes, against all odds, we squeezed in this hidden bay in Spain. Just watch your feet there. Ro and I were saying how magic it is to know that we got there by boat and like we swam to shore, it felt so you special. You feel like you've earned it, don't we you? We totally earned it. It's an adventure. To pull it off when it seemed like everything was against us, we're now leaving on a high. We're all enjoying the weather and we're settling in for the next few hours as we continue our circumnavigation, getting out of this unprotected western coast for the calm sheltered waters along the southern coastline. How much space there is back here? You can drop both of these tables down just to push up a bunny. It's cool. This one's yours, Kel. This one's the boys. And then that's gonna be my area. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> As we turned the corner, we finally had enough wind to sail, but only just, and John was keen to get a feel for how the boat handled. John wanted to tell me something. Come film that Halligan sails. 
just in here editing and John's called me. Look at this, we're doing 5.9 knots into 5.2 knots of wind, upwind. Wells up. And we're, apparent wind angle is 30 degrees, 32 degrees. What's up here? Uh, just here, I think that's probably it there. There's a cave that you can dive into and they've put statues in it. Are they old statues or new statues? I don't know. But I guess you've got to dive down there to find out. It's the only way you can know. Was it 7 to 25 metres? Apparently. That would be a cool place to go dive. While we have a rough plan, we're taking each day as it comes, going with the flow and letting the weather decide where we sail to next. And when we spot a beautiful bay, we lower the anchor and we call it home for the night. Tonight, it's off Color Blanca Beach. <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> this place is really nice. Notice oh. all the masts aren't moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How beautiful is this? Oh. Look at the houses. Oh my gosh. Whoa, I'd love to know how much they cost. Um, on the way here, we saw our fair share of sprawling mansions built right on the edge of towering cliffs. But this, this one is special. This is the most crazy home I've ever seen. Like it is so well made. I said to John, no, you're filming above the house on the left. And he's like, it's all the same, house. All the same house. house. That house is the same as that house and that house. If the owner of this house is watching this, let us know if you need some drone footage. Just send us an email. There's a tennis court on the left, a big like infinity pool. That's the nicest home I've ever seen. <laughs> like the curved roofs like that on the cliff top. I was about to say the curvature of it looks really, really nice. But with our own floating home that can take us anywhere with our waterfront views and the experience like we've had today and the many more that lie ahead, we wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Knowing that tomorrow, after indulging in this beautiful meal that we've just cooked up, we have an insane abandoned island to explore. Be right, John. What's going on? <laughs> oh my gosh. You won't want to miss it. Subscribe to join us over the coming weeks as we explore this amazing part of Europe. And thank you to our patrons for making these videos possible.